Hi there fellow BrewTubers, my name is Tony Yates, I'm an American uh, living in Norway. I'm originally from Newport, Vermont, uh, left there in 1993, joined the United States Navy, I uh, was a sailor for nine years, uh, traveled overseas, both uh, a couple of cruises over to the Gulf and then uh, uh, cruising a little bit uh, around Europe uh, on shore duty. So I'm an extract brewer. I've been brewing for uh, not long, uh, only a couple of years. I've maybe made uh, 15, 18 batches. And uh, I'm starting to get this itch to be a uh, all grain brewer. So uh, I've started to build up my uh, brewer stand. I've got some kettles. And then uh, today, a nice little package has arrived. And uh, let me show that to you. Okay, so here's my system. We're out in the garage. Um, it's a little dirty in here, so I'm not actually going to be doing brewing out here. You can see my kettles, and I'm actually going to be building one of those electrical systems. So on the right-hand side, we've got the uh, HLT, and then you can see it's a Blickman boil maker. So I'm going to go ahead and put some holes in this with some uh, the weldless uh, fittings. And then in the middle, of course, we'll have the mash chun, and then on the right hand or on the left-hand side we have uh, the boil kettle. Now the, the Blickmans are the 15 gallon versions and the boil kettle is only about 13 and a half gallons. It's the uh, 50 liter uh, kettle. And I'm thinking that I'm actually going to need to uh, bring this back to the store because you know how am I going to make you know a, ten, a good 10 gallon um, version of a, a beer with you know 13 and a half gallon uh, boil kettle. Maybe I want to build a, or make a, a big beer, you know, uh, that I'll need a little bit more water in. I have no idea yet, you know, I'm still just beginning in this all grain uh, uh, endeavor. Haven't even boiled one all grain yet, so um, yeah. So I think I'm going to go ahead and get another 15 gallon Blickman just to be uh, safe, uh, you know, to prevent the boil overs and, and whatnot and have to do anything like that. The brew stand itself is uh, really just one of those uh, kit tubing systems that you can pick up really cheaply. I think it's a, it's a steel stand. Um, uh, some of the corners and stuff, they are galvanized steel, so I'm not going to do much welding, but they've got some pretty good uh, fittings on there where I can tighten down the bolts really good in order to get the joints together. I think I picked this up for about uh, 3,500 kroner, a uh, Norwegian kroner, which is about uh, roughly 300 and yeah, probably three, a little bit more than 300 bucks. Uh, since it's going to be a all electric system, and I'm not worried about the actual top that I'm going to use. Here's just a couple of uh, pine boards that I've had uh, lying around from some shelving I built a while back in the house. Uh, right. Uh, so that's what I've got so far for equipment for my all grain. I've got the three kettles. Again, I'm going to turn the one on the left back in to get another 15 gallon Blickman and uh, for a boil kettle and then uh, today arrived that little package there on the right hand side that's uh... those are my march pumps so i ordered two of those off ebay i haven't opened them up yet so i'm kind of interested to check them out so let's go ahead and take a look at that alright so let's open this bad boy up Oops. my box cutting skills the reason i'm a programmer box opener. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I'm a little excited here. A unboxing first video. Alright, I might cut through all of them. A little excited. Yes, sir. 
Yeah. March bomb. So what do we got here? We got the 809 HS. So should be the magnetic. It's got the half inch fit-ins. Got it set up. It's a 220 plug for here in Norway. Uh, let's just make sure of that. Yep, yeah, 230 volts. Good to go. Kind of a short plug, but that's okay because it only needs to go as far as my uh, power box, actually. So I'm looking forward to show that in the future as well. Hope you guys can see that. Nice. So I got two of these bad boys. Here's another one. And we'll use one for pumping the water, and then we'll use another one for pumping the water. Water from the HLT into the mash tun, and then for the wart from the mash tun into the oil kettle. And then of course uh, we'll be recirculating um, between each one of those. And I look forward to uh, sharing those videos in the future. So yeah, this is great. Alright, so here's a closer look at those march pumps. Not too shabby. I look pretty f uh, looking forward to putting those bad boys to work. Right, so here we go. Back in my kitchen. So, that's what I've got today. I've got the march pumps. I've got uh, two of the three kettles. Again, I'll turn that one in probably next week. Uh, the brew stands and the tops. Uh, what else do I have left? Well, on order, things that should arrive next week are going to be uh, the two PIDs, uh, controllers, one to control the HLT and another one to control the, the boiler. I've got uh, two 5500 watt heating elements that are go, going to go inside there. Um, a bunch of other stuff. All the, the quick disconnects, um, those are coming in as well. Uh, what else? Of course the thermocoupler cables to go along with the PIDs. Um, you know, a few other odds and ends, but uh, that's about it. The control box that I'm going to build is very similar, but somewhat more simplistic as the, the electric brewer, the electric brewery. Um, if you haven't seen that, check it out, theelectricbrewery.com. I uh, don't know how you've missed it, um, looking at systems like this. Uh, it's just uh, the very cool uh, home system to go with. So based on a sort of that model and then sort of the framework, uh, looking at videos from uh, main brew guy, dude, thank you so much for uh, you know starting me off on this itch. Um, hockey player, your system, you're modeled after uh, main brew guy. Uh, fantastic. Uh, I saw that you had two pumps too as well. Cool. Um, yeah. So there's just so many cool people in this community that I uh, draw inspiration and uh, aspirations from in order to get my system up and running. And hopefully it will be, you know, um, you know as as good as yours. Uh, seriously, it's uh, so cool. Uh, thanks a lot to uh, Craig over at uh, Craig's Tube for getting me into Extract Brewing, dude. You've helped me out uh, so much uh, in order to get myself involved in the the home brew sort of system and set up, and then now this community. Um, all of your tutorials have just been phenomenal. And uh, uh, you know, mixing and matching different uh, uh, kits, and uh, including hops, and of course the uh, partial mashes, and uh, all of that sort of stuff. You know, it's it's uh, it's been fantastic, and uh, I'm so happy that you're now starting to get into uh, um, all grain brewing. You've done it before me, and uh, I watched that video, and it's fantastic. I loved the uh, the taste test that you did with uh, your first batch. Phenomenal, had to watch it twice. Uh, yeah, I just hope to be able to uh, start doing all grain brewing very, very soon, like the rest of you. And uh, again, thanks a lot. Cheers. Don't have a home brew with me. What the hell? <clears throat> Alright, so that was just totally unacceptable. Here we go. Ooh, serious carbonation. This is a, uh, it's about a, a four-week-old um, uh, Cooper's Australian Pale Ale. 
dry hop through the cascades for seven days after in the secondary. So let's give this a pour. Slightly aggressive pour. Alright. It's pretty clear. It's a little bit hazy and foggy. It's not a very uh, cold beer. Um, yeah. It's got some pretty good carbonization in there. Not sure if you can see that. And a couple finger head. It uh, the head goes down relatively quickly. Lacen, yeah, that's okay. That's the taste. The aroma, you can smell the cascades. It's uh, kind of citrusy. A um, little bit of apple hints. Yeah. Uh, give it a taste. So yeah, uh, a kit beer, but even kit beers just blow anything that you can buy in the store away. In the normal store, the uh, you know all that beer that's like uh, sex on a canoe, you know, it's fucking close to water. So this is a uh, pretty damn good, nice summer brew. Uh, I got an IPA on uh, in the fermenter, so you put it in a ounce of Cascade after uh, three or four days. On the seventh day I put in an ounce of uh, Simcoe and an ounce of Centennial and uh, that's been setting for a few days and um, so I'm going to uh, go ahead and um, bottle that up in the next couple nights and then uh, maybe do a taste test on that in you know, another couple weeks or so uh, when that's ready. So yeah, once again Thanks a lot to all the, the brew tubers. I look forward to being part of the community. Uh, it's fantastic. Absolutely love it. Cheers, 17. Oh, yeah. Sweet.